Shalom, uh, our first uh, prayer and then the reading of the word of God. We want to continue with uh, lessons based on scripture as the uh, prophets gave them to us and as the Messiah fulfilled those scriptures and uh, represented them uh, to the fullest. And we're supposed to be in his image and likeness and we are to do, according to the Great Commission, what he did in even greater works. So how can you do what he did if you're not aware of uh, how he did it and uh, exactly what he did by the word, by the gospel? That is exactly the uh, story of how he got down at, when he walked the earth. Don't trust me to tell you about Jesus and don't trust your pastor, your minister to tell you about Jesus. Certainly don't trust your lodge to tell you about Jesus. Do not trust your um, theology instructor to tell you about Jesus. Do not simply rely upon the word of your loving grandma. Although those are all uh, people whose testimonies you can glean something useful from, you want to know about Jesus on your own. And it's cold in here, but I want to show that proper reverence. Uh, big shout out to uh, Brother D'Angelo. Um, and it's cold on the bald head. But again, the Holy Spirit will, will quicken you and he'll make you warm, right? <laughs> But no, I just got through talking to uh, Brother Minister Lenny about laying his body down. And, um, you know, one of my favorite Johnny Cash songs, Ain't no grave can hold my body down. But um, I didn't mean it in that respect, but, you know, laying it down unto death. But I meant as you yet live, lay that body down. Put that body down on the ground where it belongs. That body think it's something else. You look in the mirror at it. You, you brush your waves. You, you know, you, you spend a lot of time on that body. You spend a lot of time feeding it what it won't, uh, 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 rubbing it how it want to be rubbed. Uh, you do a lot of things with that body. And unfortunately, that body stands in the way of that spirit. Now, there's a way that they're supposed to work one with the other, be in the world but not of the world. There's a way that you have to walk in this world and uh, be subject to some degree to the ways of the world to some degree. Uh, while still at the same time knowing that you serve one whose ways are higher than man's and that that which is in you is greater than that which is in he that is in the world. So uh, we want to begin first with prayer. We want to ask that the Heavenly Father cleanse the air and that he uh, block the ability of any demonic forces to speak one to another concerning uh, this business of our fathers that we're conducting. So right now, Heavenly Father, we touch and agree there is no space, place, and time in the Holy Spirit. Right now, Heavenly Father, that you, you're hearing this prayer. You're guiding this prayer. Guide my thoughts, my tongue, my heart, and my actions to be in alignment with your will for my life and for the lives of all who view. Heavenly Father, let a true blessing come forth from this lesson. And Heavenly Father, do not allow for me to get in the way. Remove my ego. Father, allow for Ruch HaKodesh to animate me. Let me be as the ant and simply follow your instructions. We don't pray it long, we pray it strong. And it is so in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, in Jesus' name. Okay, and briefly, quickly, the Lord gave me something on Jesus and I have to share this with you. Okay, this is, this is what the Lord gave me. I was thinking about Jesus and I'm like, why did Jesus work? I'm still struggling with something that happened 11 years ago. 11 years ago, the Lord showed me when an extra dimensional entity, what believers call demons, what uh, believers in the Quran, who are also believers, Abrahamic believers, whether you know it or not, hear me now, believe me, let it do some studying on it. Don't allow Fox News to tell you about Muslims. Stop letting people tell you about other people. Jesus, Muslims, anybody. Find out for yourself. But uh, um, what the Lord was dealing with me on, you know, I was still thinking about this experience. Like, wow, why did the word Jesus work? You know, um, uh, we visit and fellowship with a messianic community. And, of course, they uphold the name Yeshua, which we know there was no E in the ancient Hebrew. So it would not have been Yeshua. And why would not the Father's name be in the Son, who said that I and my Father are one? And that um, um, I am in my father, and my father's in me. And so you've got Yahshua that the uh, Israelite family 
um, that uh, I'm a part of showed me. Okay? So then you have what the Lord showed me in the supernatural experience in real time application of spiritual theory. We're all dealing with spiritual theory. You're given spiritual theory. It's your theory. It's your theory that the Holy Spirit is not part of the Trinity. Or it's a theory that comes from somewhere. There's a there's a theory that says that there's a trinity. These are theories. Until you put a theory to practice, you do not know if it's true. And even when we're talking about spiritual things, even once you put the theory into practice, you have to beware. Because you can lean to your own understanding. The human mind is very tricky. The human mind will get you to believe that something is so simply because it's what you'd prefer to believe. Well, we don't want to be subject uh, to any of that here at a temple of the true Yahshua. We want to be guided by what is true, what we can say we have tried uh, as wise scientists in the, the, the physical, in this material world. Scientists do experiments and they test things out and then they say a thing is true. And guess what? Another scientist will try it another way 10, 15 years and that very thing that they said was true, they'll end up amending. So it's a real-time learning experience that we're having here on the planet. And I don't want to hear the doctrine of Christianity, nor do I want to hear the doctrine of Islam, nor do I want to hear the doctrine of Hebrew-Israelite. I want to know the truth in these days and times. And I know that within different disciplines, some more than others, there are nuggets and morsels of truth, and there's a foundation of truth upon which I can stand that will lead me to be able to discern what is true and what is the folly of man. And that's not my intellect, nor is it academia. I'm going to get on that. Some of the, and trust me, this will be a message in faith uh, and a Bible-based one. But let's deal with this a little bit in, in, in Jesus. I'm on point. Okay. Uh, There is truth in every spiritual discipline. There is some truth because no lie can stand without some part of the truth. No lie can stand that long. We also know that the devil does not create anything. So even those things that we call devilish and demonic, even those uh, belief systems that we demonize, uh, Hinduism, Buddhism, they had to be built on a true foundation. So you find the concept of karma, which is built on a true foundation, you reap what you sow. So sometimes we get caught up in semantics, the antics of the Semite. If you notice the, the uh, Zionist lawyers who uh, uh, attain great status in the satanic nation, uh, uh, and even those whom they teach, like Brother Johnny Cochran, can have quite a way with words and even Bill Clinton exhibited with the uh, is, what does the meaning of is, you know, you, we can get off into that and guess what you're going to do? You're going to totally lose sight of the point. So we're not going to get off into that, but we will recognize and realize that there are things that we're going to have to glean sometimes from sources outside of the source, the foundation. Your house is built on a foundation, but you've got some things in your house that have nothing to do with that foundation, but yet they complete the house. Because in fact they really do have to do with the foundation because they help complete the house god created all of these things the devil created nothing all he can do is lie and distort all he can do is cause fear and confusion but he cannot create he can cause violence he can cause lust he can cause gluttony he can increase you in pride but he cannot create so when you begin to say he created a thing you're an heir off rip you have to begin to backtrack that thing and really look at it how it was truly created when I say thing well the fallen angels brought us cosmetics the fallen angels brought us something heavenly and converted it into something demonic music when people get on the music tip you know the music uh, you know, it's nice it's all Illuminati I can't listen to nothing uh, music is all bad is music bad and music good then you have the ultra metaphysics Oh, there is no bad and there is no good. You blind as a bat. It's bad and good and it always will be. 
perhaps your ability to judge and discern these things can be muddied up by some of the spirits that run rampant throughout the realms. But um, there is something to glean from everything that's available to us now. If we hold the foundation, and I mean this Aquarian age is going to be rocky because we're going to lose some soldiers. Uh, God forbid because he, he wills that none should perish. But we're going to lose some soldiers because there's so many doctrines of devils and so much confusion in the news and in the church and in the street. Uh, confusion has run abound and the love of many has waxed cold and where love fixes a, a multitude of things, uh, where love lacks a multitude of things going to go wrong. So we're in a climate in an environment now where there's more information and there's less love. There's less love of information. There's less love of truth. Um, and many are in the darkness and many question what they used to know for sure. Uh, and I'm talking about those who knew that uh, Yeshua is the real deal. Holy field. And any other way will lead you into some sort of confusion. Can Christianity lead you into confusion? Can um, um, he Hebrewism, as some call it, can the study of that lead you into confusion? Zionism lead you into confusion? Anything of this world can lead you into confusion, my brother or my sister. That's why we try to stay away from the labels and whatnot. We come to the temple to learn. And we come to learn based on the example of Yeshua. Yeshua's example, the example of Jesus, the Messiah, the Savior, the light of the world, is the example that if you follow, it will steer you strong and not steer you wrong. But some of us have a hard time following and bowing down, lay this nasty flesh body down. You think it look good. You think it's so sharp. You think it's so pretty. You got so much swag when you put clothes on it. Lay that body down and submit. That's full submission. And that is taking the pride aspect. You, know, you want to stand up? Stand up for yourself. How about bow down for yourself? And the word Jesus, we are told, is supposed to be a Greek word. Uh, J. Zeus. The Zeus, a word for pig. Or ja, Zeus. See, it's a combination of the Canaanite Yah with the Greek god Zeus. Or, um, say, uh, um, what else have I heard? Uh, uh, it, it, it's really, it's just us. Because it's just us that they got trapped in the lie of Jesus. There was no J in Hebrew. When the last time you've been to Israel and read any ancient Hebrew scrolls? Well, no, I learned it from Dr. Such and Such. And where did Dr. Such and Such and Such learn it from? Well, he went to the University of Khartoum over in the Middle East, and he studied all those. And at that university, was there any fraternal orders? Was the university itself set up by a fraternal order? Who set up the university? Who okays the information that the university ordains? So because a, co a, a college professor who himself struggles with bowing his body down and giving it up to something greater than him because of his intellect. If a professor tells you, well, in, the, in Hebrew, we cannot find the, this sound that would produce J. Not even Gemel. Okay. Forgetting how few of us have studied Aramaic. And I'm, I'm, in, that, I'm in that pot. I got a good partner of mine who, who uh, and again, you know, how can I trust simply his word? But he, he uh, shares with me different things he learned with Aramaic. And, uh, you know, I've cross-referenced and checked those things out enough to uh, know that uh, that's an area that I need to get deeper into. But, uh, again, do we serve a creator that is that OCD? That's better, right, Win? Do we serve a creator who would be so cold? That would be cold-blooded. Let's just call it what it is. That that would be cold-blooded. You know, uh, we know the story of Joshua and, and how he reprimanded them. Uh, and, and let's take that in full context if we're going to take that as uh, proof of truth that God will drop hammers on Grandma because she's still calling him Jesus. See, see, I get you when I drop Grandma on there, don't I? 
because your compassion for your grandmother comes out. How dare you think that you've got more compassion for your grandmother than Ahaya, Abaya? He understands that there are many people who are born in poor and impoverished communities whose education level is not great, whose ability to read and research is limited, and whose desire to read and research has been greatly altered and limited. So then only one egg-headed like me who don't mind a book, matter of fact, dig them, could access certain things of God. So God is a respecter of persons. He respects the intellectual. He respects the educated mind. Much more so. You see, I bring you the old school because, see, the old school didn't have the benefit of some of the knowledge that we have, you know. And because we have that knowledge, you know, we LeBroning out here. But uh, you're foolish if you don't think LeBron has studied Jordan, Dr. J. Magic Johnson. Why? Because there's fundamentals there. There's fundamentals there. That sometimes because we too busy finessing, you know, that we have the higher knowledge, our fundamentals lack. You cannot go forth in spiritual warfare without being covered by the Rok, HaKadosh yourself, no matter what you call it. No matter what you, if you say it's a part of this or it's a part of that, it's a part of winning battles against demons. And I know that from real time battlefield experience. Application of a spiritual theory put in play in a real situation. Time and time again. It's what taught me because I was so uh, 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 strong in my delusion that I knew what time it was because I'd studied everything academia had to offer. And all of the pro-black conscious guys, and you know, I'd studied them, Ashrock Kwesi and Dr. Ben, and I had read all the books, Naeem Akbar and everything you're supposed to read, Francis Cress Welsing, and you're supposed to know these things if you're going to be a good uppity collegiate black and look down on your brothers and sisters in the hood who don't know these things and never will. So you can put yourself in another upper echelon. You can step up. That's what you're trying to do, not to step up mentally. But you, you, you desire for those things to bring you money and, and fame and whatnot too. Down deep, it's the natural thing of the flesh to do so. So I'm not condemning that, but I'm, I'm, I'm going to uh, air that out because it's true. So our motives and stuff get thwarted and messed up in the black consciousness community as well. So sometimes we got to go back to grandma and mama and auntie and get the simple, basic rudiments back together. Because you've not been practicing with your right and left, learning to dribble uh, uh, simply with right and left hand. You've been trying to practice a crossover. So now when the situation comes in the game where you really just need to have fundamentals and be able to turn to the side and keep it going with the left hand, you can't do it. So I desire that my teammates get some of everything. And just because I bring... Uh, Magic Johnson in to show us some rudiments about passing. I'm not saying everybody pass like Magic Johnson. I'm saying, hey, Magic Johnson ought to pass. You know, perhaps he can impart some things about passing to you if I let him rap with you. And that's my intent for that. And I make no apologies for it, but I love you uh, for pointing that out. Because, you know, uh, you wasn't the only one. And I'm going to tell you too, you know, uh, I feel that way about a lot of those things too, still to this day. But I'm going to tell you what I do do. I ask for a hire to guide me. I, I, I plead with Abba to guide me to lean not into my own understanding, not to be led by this big, bald head, but to be led by spirit instead. And it's that Rukh HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit that he's imparted to me late in the game that gets the job done the best. Much better than my own studying and what I thought I knew. And uh, he, he shows me that to humble me. And I thought that perhaps I would show it to uh, give whatever benefit that I receive to others. 
So enough about that. Let's get on to something better. Um, so again, Jesus, don't be so quick to believe what they told you about Jesus. Because guess what? You got it from books. They got it from books. And the source, who is the source? Greece and Egypt. Again, you're going by what we're told. Now, if then got to kick in. If then, what's if then? If then is the basic logic model. I use it when I'm using when I'm using this to figure out something. It's if then. Okay, but I try not to use this because this will mess, this will steer you wrong. I use this when I'm poster. But for spiritual matters, if you try to use a, a, a physical things to discern spiritual matters, you're using your brain, it's mental. That brain is made of flesh. When you try to use physical things to discern spiritual matters, you will lose yourself in. But uh, Jesus uh, works in real-time situations against demonic entities. Now, well, it's because they said it in their mind that it works. You know, I talked to a, a very wise brother. I was at the library uh, in Mansfield yesterday, and I ran into a brother. He was an elder, and, and so, I, uh, you know, I always respect my elders. Uh, that's key. That's just that, that's just key. That's key to being real. You, you never know what you might, uh, what kind of game you might get. You know, if you can just sit down and think not, know that you know not, and let go sometimes and just let God, let God impart something to you that might be very different than what you think you already understand. And he may give you inner standing, beyond overstanding. So um, the brother was very deep, man. He was sitting there playing chess with another brother, and... Um, Prophet Lenny and I was discussing things, matters matters of the spirit, the lesson as a matter of fact that uh, I'm going to bring today. Brother Minister Prophet Lenny and I were discussing that he had been given the same lesson prior to my arrival here from Detroit. And so we knew that it was because, well, hey, we must be one in accordance with the same spirit, which is the Ruk HaKodesh, or called by your grandma and your auntie, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost. And that's okay. That's okay. That's all right. God is not like that. Thank God he's not like we are. We like that. Hey, man, you ain't using the right names. of it. God is love and overstanding and correction and chastisement. I love it. Chastise me. Correct me. Make me stronger. Make me better. But don't try to make the way you view things and your parameters be the parameters of a graceful and merciful, true and living, omnipotent, omniscient, almighty Yah. No. He overstands things beyond our comprehension. And for the poor and downtrodden and for the miseducated, he will arise. Not for the wise and civilized and uppity to head up yo. You know so much. Drop down. Drop down a few notches, a few levels. And watch what the Most High will show you when you remove that. The ego is standing up strong in you. That's a strong man demon of pride. And if it's pride inside, how can Yahshua reside? A house divided against itself cannot stand. This is your house. This is a temple of the true Yahshua. Ain't no building. A temple. From the crown to the souls. And he's no respect of persons. You a temple too. But we're supposed to fill this temple with the spirit of the true and living God who's too big to simply live in here. He's expansive. He's living everywhere. And the spark he can put in me have to be separated and still one with him. How can it be separate and one at the same time? Not in physical rules it can't, but in spiritual rules it can. You got to begin to walk more in the spirit and see things from the spiritual realm. The spiritual realm is as different as the real world and the matrix is in the movies, the matrix movies. Just as different. The rules are different. There are some similarities that, that, you know, for comparison's sake, 
so that you don't just totally be discombobulated when you're in the spirit. There are some similarities, but the rules are so different. You must use the spirit to discern the spirit. That's why scripture tells us, test the spirit by the spirit, correct? So by what spirit? You test the spirit that's coming at you to see whether it's of God or not by the spirit of God that's in you, which we call Rokh HaKodesh and grandma and auntie and pastor Pope Chop too call it Holy Ghost they used to teach uh, uh, in, in the uh, gods and earth you know and in and, and, and a why they would teach us that's spookism that's the white man trying to get you scared of ghosts and goblins and the unseen things but see I didn't have sense enough to know it's right in the Quran all through the Quran prophet Prophet uh, uh, Muhammad is said um, to have been asked, Prophet Muhammad, do you have a jinn? You know, you said everybody has a jinn. Jinn is what uh, the jinn is the concept of demon from the Arabic world, and it's a, it's an older uh, uh, concept too. It's really based on Aramaic. When they call that that liquor, that bumpy face, they call it jinn. Uh, it's the same tones. We gotta remember too, we're dealing with tones. And although Jesus sound like it started with a J and there was no J in Hebrew, we don't we don't know what they've taken out of Aramaic or what they've taken out of Hebrew and then hand it back to us and say, Oh see, here's Hebrew. See, his his name couldn't have been that. Though it's power in the name to drive out unclean extra dimensionals. Regardless of my belief in it, I had no belief in it whatsoever, but he allowed the, the most high put me in a situation where I was reading a book to a person and the extra dimensional came out of them because the book had an anointing on it, little did I know, but it came out of them because, you know, it was a, it was a, 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 a religious based book. It was written by a man of God, uh, Dr. Ken Olson, Exorcism, Fact or Fiction, uh, the web imprint of that, when I was looking for it around that time, disappeared. Whether it has reappeared or resurfaced now, I don't know. But uh, from reading, in reading that book, and I mean, I was reading it like I read all kind of books. I, I read Crowley. That don't mean I, you know, was was believing it. You know, uh, I was reading it for study, and was as far as in my own belief, my belief was. Jesus have no power. How could it have power? There was no J in Hebrew. Jesus could not be his name. He was a Hebrew man. Why wouldn't he speak Hebrew? Why would he allow, you know, blah, blah, blah. And then he, even there's 40 some scriptures that talk about my people will perish for lack, lack of knowledge or remember my name. So I, so the, the name of God, I, I feel a little differently about with uh, Messiah. But I will say, I believe the case can be the same either way. Brothers and sisters, we can't trust the captors to tell us what we see with our own eyes is not what we see. You can't trust them. It's a demonic, devilish world we live in. So in a demonic, devilish world, why would they leave the information out here untainted? No. In a devilish world, if I was one of the devils in charge of those things, I would remove any evidence from any books that there's power in the name Jesus. Matter of fact, I would have everybody believe in his name could not have been that. So that they will not use it. So that the highest levels of consciousness in society will be unable to access him. I will put in the books that they trust that his name could not have been that. That's what I would do. But then, of course, they're smarter than me. Let's go to some reading, y'all. It's enough of that. Enough about that. Let's get on to something better. 17 and 20. Uh, today's lesson, we, we want to deal with move mountains. Okay, with your faith. By your faith, you are to move mountains, move kingdoms. And I do want to thank uh, Rabbi Williams. And we know Yahshua said to call no man rabbi. Um, and I understand the meaning of that. But again, uh, this, is, this is the title of the man and I know about him in real life as opposed to just what you can glean from what you see with your own eyes and in real life um, he's a man of God and so as a man of God I'll respect uh, what he is called when in Rome do as the Romans do and at the same time be no respecter of persons when I say officer I'm not I, I, I don't respect that cop 
You feel that, don't you? But, you know, I understand. Some people say it with reverence. You hear them say it. But, you know, oh, pastor did such and such. So the way they say it, you're like, hey, you, you in love with them, ain't you? So you don't hear me say things in that manner because I understand the rules of this world and I don't get locked into sin antics. I understand the rules of this world. It's rules to this world that the Holy Spirit have me to understand how to duck and dodge and slip between and be like water wit as opposed to be like fire. You know, can you imagine if I still have my locks which did not fall out because of bad genetics thanks to Yah? Okay, I took them off for strategic reasons. I cut my beard for strategic reasons. Trust me, many of you would not have received me. Many of you would not, let alone people in the street. I saw the response I got. And it's going to be a time for me to return to that. Please believe it. But the time's not now. So for now, we lightweight jamming a little bit, bobbing and weaving a little bit, being clever, be wise as serpents, and gentle as doves. I ain't trying to hurt nobody, and I'm certainly not trying to steer anyone wrong. The things I bring to you, as I said before, these things are for me. I could be selfish, and I could say, you know, you know, of course, I would not because I fear the repercussions of God in doing that, and I know it's wrong, and I love my brothers and sisters too much to keep from them something God has gifted me with a plenty enough to share. So I bring these things to share with you as I learn. And I'm not the sharpest knife in the drawer, but I ain't the dullest bulb in the lamp neither. So I vet, I do vet what I know God has given me before I give it to you because I say, well, he's given it to me for certain specific reasons and I may not uh, um, be directed by him to give it to you in exactly the same way because it was tailor-made specifically for me from him. And I am to tailor-make it specifically, excuse me, the Holy Spirit in me is to guide how it's to be tailor-made specifically for you, for the masses, because different viewers will tell me different things about what they benefited from in the same message. And that's one reason why, too, he allows for me to freestyle a little bit and go around a little taste. But if you notice, I'm better this year. Am I better this year? As far as the long-winded stuff go, y'all? Somebody tell me something. Anyway, I, I can take it. I won't cry. So this was a lesson that was shown to me by another teacher, man of God, and it's just the word teacher. And teacher uh, Williams showed and proved uh, about the power of life and death being in the tongue to move mountains and the literal significance of that. And also Prophet Lenny, uh, he and I, we have been really, and, and you know, he's, he, he prophesies and the Lord gave me that to call him. He don't want to be called that, but it is what it is. Um, you know, he, he says, because he knows I'm a man of God and I hear from the Lord in the 100 way, he said, well, he knows that's the Lord calling me that, and so I can call him that, and, and, and he, he don't want nobody else calling him that in order to keep himself humble. And that's beautiful. I'm in, uh, I'm in agreement with that. So let's do a little reading, and then let's get a little bit into our ability to move mountains out of our lives, literally. Despite what may seem like to you, as insurmountable odds. You were given from the very beginning the ability to overcome all things if you access the power of God, Roruk HaKodesh, in the way God says to do it. And again, you say, well, how do you know God said it? But the Masons might have put that in there and blah, say, please give me this, that, and the third. Well, you test it. You test the spirit by the spirit. That's all I can tell you about that. I don't know what to say for you. You got to test it. You have to test the spirit by the spirit. Yes, things have been tainted and tampered with, but I'm going to tell you what. Why I roll with the Holy Ghost with the most from coast to coast is because it can't be fooled. There is a way to not be fooled. There's a way you can prevent yourself from ever being fooled. I can prove it to you. 
I ain't telling you no lie. Matthew 24 and 24. Now, if I'm lying, call Jesus a lie. Matthew 24 and 24. For there shall arise, I dare you, for there shall arise false Christs and false prophets and shall show great signs and wonders in so much that if it were possible, they would deceive the very elect. So that means that the very elect have been equipped with something that it's impossible to deceive. What is that something? The intellect? They study more than the next man. They got a hold of more books. They could buy more books. They could pay for more tuition. So God respect them better and make them elect? No. What sets them aside, what makes them unable to be deceived is the spirit of God lives in them, which is a spirit that cannot be deceived. For it is the Alpha and Omega. It is the all-knowing, omniscient, omnipresent omnipotent, all-powerful, true and living God that is true, that vibrates true. It cannot be fooled. But for something that huge and powerful to live within you, it has divided itself into spirit and poured itself along the land like water. Water represents spirit. Be like a water, Bruce Lee said, and that meant a lot of things. It meant like the spirits too. That's what he meant, be like the spirits. He has poured out his spirit upon mankind at this time, just as he said he would in the last days. He would pour his spirit out upon man. Why? Because that's going to be the only way we're going to be able to make it through the beginning of sorrows, which is where we're at now. Uh, the Lord moved on me to do something I've never done before, and I'm nothing and no one. So if I could do it, you can too. But he moved this lazy, raggedy body to lay itself down on the, on, on, on the, on the flow. Get on the flow. And I got on the flow, like you do when you're doing something wrong, you get on the flow. I got on the flow, and I put my head down, and I, I, I was in a church that was led to by Prophet Lenny. The largest, uh, no, I'm not going to identify the church, but I was in a church. And there was someone praying in tongues, and it was very grievous to me. But I don't mean in the way like when too many people doing it at once or somebody showboating. I mean, they was really receiving the tongues of the angelic realm, okay? And if you think the angelic realm speaks the Hebrew we can excess, because when I hear tongues, oftentimes I hear people speaking Hebrew and a form of Hebrew that's not the form that we're taught from the Yiddish rabbi masters, nor is it the form we're taught by Yahweh bin Yahweh and the like. So there's something else too. Of course there would be. It's the days of revelation. That's getting revealed now. So don't look down on speaking in tongues. Okay, You do look at it dubiously because there are deceiving spirits that cause people to do that. And God is not the author of confusion. You got four or five people speaking in tongues at once. Something is wrong. Somebody's out of order. But when the tongues come, according to scripture, there's supposed to be certain signs that follow. Now, you're supposed to tell the interpretation. Okay? I've never told an interpretation, nor was I able to hear one. But as I heard this, this sorrowful tongue, and I thought about what my brother Lawrence in Texas had mentioned about tongues, and how I felt that way for so long. And I mean, I was just, I'm just now starting to see something I couldn't see, because I was letting logic guide my, guide my viewpoint. As I'm seeing more that spiritual rules totally usurp what's logical and rational okay the lord is start with the, uh, Yah was revealing to me hey the old folks in them tongues like that's based on on on, on real spit and so I, I'm, I'm paying more attention to tongues and i'm watching how they manifest in me because i'm not finna make up nothing and, and be a uh, hamanama simanama hamanama simanama never but i feel the urging of the spirit at times to say it in Hebrew as opposed to say it in English, the language of anguish, this cursed spellbound language. And again, the Hebrew that I know is limited and it was taught to me by people I should be dubious of it as well. So how do you know? What keeps you from being fooled? 
Matthew 24 and 24 just told you. Go back and look at it. Matthew 24 and 24 says there's a way that you can never be deceived. That's by being one of the elect. How do you be one of the elect? In these days and times, you're going to be filled with the Holy Spirit. That don't mean it's going to be the same way Grandma and them did it. I'm telling you. Because Yahshua said he was returning. Jesus said. The Messiah said. Yahavashah said. He was returning for a church without spot or blemish. And that church is being built right now. And he's not a short bus savior. And we don't serve a short bus God. No disrespect meant to any who has been wrongly diagnosed by this lying medical system as having some sort of mental retardation or learning disability. Those things are falsehoods and those are false demon spirits and I rebuke them in the name of Yahshua Hamashiach right now by his power and by his authority for I have none. It's not by might but by faith and by the spirit, the Holy Spirit, Ruch HaKodesh, that we call it done. So he understands who you're calling and, and all that type of stuff. We don't get lost in that. But we want to get lost in becoming elect. Becoming of the elect. The elect will not be subject to the same deception. To the same ability to fall for that deception. As the rest. And I mean we're coming into a time where they finna step up the deception. 10,000. They finna turn all the way up. So we need more more lessons, more scripture-based lessons. And I, I, I welcome all uh, discussion of the spirit and, and what it means. I welcome it all. I, I welcome it because steel sharpens steel. And um, I'm I am learning. I'm yet learning. As I as I made admission to before. Some of these things are things I've known for some time or thought I've known for some time. Some of these things are things that have newly been imparted to me as I'm walking a spiritual journey that's in some ways foreign. And then some of these things are things that, um, you know, that uh, I have yet to learn and I'm still questioning. And on some levels, I'm still questioning when to tongue and when not to tongue. And I ain't talking about kissing. But... Let me finish with the story in the church. So I heard the sister praying, and she was praying uh, this sorrowful prayer in tongue. And you know, I, you know, I'm thinking these thoughts, thinking about me and the brother. You know, you know, thinking about the questions that we have, the legitimate questions. And as I'm thinking about the questions, see, this is how y'all do me. He intercept my thought, cause I can go down a stream of thought, same way I can go down a stream of consciousness when I'm talking. I can do the same thing when I'm thinking. So he stopped me before I could get further in the thought. And he confirmed, he said, he said, yes, he said, he said, this, he said, listen to her, to, listen to her. And I listened to her with the engineer's ear. I listened to her with the producer's ear. I listened to her with the musician's ear. I listened to her with the minister's ear. And I heard truth and delivery. And I knew, I said, she's not babbling. She ain't making that up. Wow, okay, we got a real one right there. Okay, all right. Praise Yah. And it was like, you know, then I, then I began to wonder, okay, well, since it's real today, what did she say? And the Lord began fooling on me because he started to tell me what she said. And it's something that a lot of people say that they've been doing for some time. And I doubted that it was possible to do. But I'm here to tell you, if you consider me to be any reasonably credible source of these spiritual matters that when people say that you can interpret the tongues well, first when people say that there are angelic tongues that come from the most high that will be used in order to speak because we must speak the power of the word John chapter 1 uh, um, there, there is th that importance to speak things into existence the vibrational tones well, he was showing me the importance of the vibrational tones that come from ancient times, that come from less tainted languages, that come from the very angelic realm. The language is there. And he began to tell me what she was saying. And he started off with, you know, well, what does it feel like? He was teaching me. And as a, you know, from the engineer's ear, if I'm listening to a rapper deliver or a singer, I'm listening to the delivery. I'm listening for trueness, real, realness. Nah, that don't sound convincing. 
do it, do it over. I heard sorrow, real for real sorrow. So sorrowful, and it was real, and it was deep sorrow and pain. And so I began to say, well, Lord, I need to pray for her concerning this sorrow. So I said, well, Lord, you know, what is she sorrowful about? And he told me the beginning of sorrows. And he, the way he do with me is like, he dropped like a bag of information at one time. Like it's all in, it's all in the bag. And I know what's in there. But instead of like pulling out one thing at the time, here, eat that, here, eat that. He put it like a bag of information and just drop it like boom, boom, and it's in my lap. So then I knew he told me in that instance everything that she was saying, and I was confident that it was in there. And so then he said, well, now that you know, and you know that you know, because I told you so, because you're nothing and no one. I said, yes, Abba. He said, well, now... You know what you must do. You have to tell. I was like, wow. You know, you know. I'm not a shy person, but I do like to be in order. And I do like to be quiet. Believe it or not, I really like to be quiet. Just, just sit and, uh, uh, like Jill Scott said on the song, just be quiet. I like to just sit and be quiet sometimes. And read my read my book, look over some stuff on the uh, YouTube or whatnot, do some writing, but I like quiet. So I felt like my quiet was disturbed, and I felt out of place, and I felt a little Moses Mosesy. Well, you know, how can I speak to these people? They don't know me. You know, I was in a church that we hadn't been familiar with uh, since coming down here. It was my first time being there, but please believe I'm going back. That church had an anointing over it um, because it taught your boy a new thing uh well the spirit was there excuse me the atmosphere was conducive to learning a new thing i could have learned it while i was standing on the bus stop but that's what he chose to do because he knows in my thinking okay that's a school i need to go get a couple classes at so i will return for that and it was connected to another event you know we was led there because of something else that was spirit field that went on and led us there so I knew that it was all in divine order. So anyway, make a long story short, I did. I stood on up. That, well, no. I said, well, now, you know, Lord, you know, when am I going, you know. He was like, you know, you, I'll make a way for you. Just watch. Be able to make real-time adjustments and watch. Okay. So I didn't worry about it. Threw it out of my mind. Went, went into prayer. Continue praying. Praying on my hands and knees as was everyone else. Then I heard, because my back was turned, I heard the, the uh, you know, what sounded like the pastor saying, okay, now, okay, we want everybody to line up here for praise and worship. Everybody come on, line up. Praise and worship. So, I, uh, you know, slowly I began to, no, no, no. Before he said this, I'm sorry. I, I got to get his testimony, and then we're going to go into the lesson. But before he said this, he said, uh, Uh, before the pastor said that, the Lord said to me, I said, well, Lord, I said, you know, I want to be sure. I ain't making this up. I got a good imagination. I said, Lord, if, if this is you, and you showing me something about tongues right now, I said, give me a sign. Lord, give me a sign. And he said, open up your eyes. He, 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 he is cold. He's the coldest. You better respect me. He said, open up your eyes. And because I was on my hands and knees, I was eye level with some boots across the aisle at another pew, cat a corner. And I looked, I seen the boots, registered, military boots. I looked up, huh, military tucked pants into the boots. Okay, camo pants, okay, move up. Military shirt and name tag, Army, U.S. Army. Okay. And, okay, Lord, is this a sign? And before I could finish my thought, he told me all about him, what I was to tell them. Okay, so I ain't got to say it twice. I'll wait until we get to that moment. Okay, so bam, the moment is coming. So now um, I'm looking at that. He tells me about it. 
is that you know you give her that word, give her the word for her, give them the word for the church that came from the tongues, and then you give her the word that I just gave you because you had the nerve to ask me for a sign, Baldy. So pastor gets up, he says, okay, everybody, we're going to do a little praise and worship now. I felt good, you know, to get up off my knees and to, to now be able to see what he was going to do next, you know, while I'm walking. Now, I know he's going to fool with me some more. So I went over there and I was, you know, praising and praying and whatnot. And when I'm really in the spirit, uh, he, he flushes me by causing me to tear. I tear, tear tremendously. And I'm not crying because I don't be... <laughs> But the tears just come down. I'd be just, just like I am now, but the water just be coming, which is cleansing. And so um, I was praising him. I was feeling, feeling it, feeling the spirit, feeling the Ruk HaKodesh. And lo and behold, um, you know, I started just saying out of my mouth, I got to testify. I got to testify. I got to testify. And I was not loud. The pastor, who was about four people down from me, looked down there at me. And, you know, they look at new faces. So, you know, don't get fooled on that. You know, I was a new face. So he looked down there at me, maybe just to check on me, say how I was receiving things. And he seen my mouth saying, I got to testify. I got to testify. And so he, he said, you got to testify, brother? I said, yes. He said, go ahead. I said, okay, thank you. So, you know, I get in robot mode when I'm dealing with the most high because I can't let none of this Detroitishness or none of this ghetto-ness or none of this other stuff get in the way when I'm dealing with the most high in a serious moment like that. It's, it's one thing for teaching because when we're taught entertainment while teaching is not a bad idea. It can help lessons stick. And I know that coming from that world, the entertainment world. But when I step into the capacity and office that he places me in as a serious, real deal business man of him, then it ain't none of that. I go into robot mode. And so I was in robot mode. So I stepped forward because when I say robot mode, I mean I'm letting him totally animate my decisions. Totally animate what I do, what I say, how I move. So I moved. I was in robot mode. I got out there and I said, uh, you know, as he gave me utterance, I told them what he told me. You know, I impressed upon them that they don't be lagging behind because there are many who understand how late in the harvest it is and that Yeshua is indeed coming soon and we are indeed in the beginning of sorrow. Some of us don't realize how far ahead of schedule we are. Uh, people believe that it's 10, 20 years to this happened and that happened. No. A lot of things are going to happen this year that may cause some hearts to faint if they are not prepared now, mentally prepared. And, you know, I delivered it at a, you know, in a, as compassionate and warrior style at the same time a message as I could because I knew I was in a place where that would not be misconstrued. Okay? See? So, um, I gave them the word because I I also know that some folks are very deathly afraid of tribulation and of the beginning of sorrows and of the new world order. And they're so scared of it. They want to sweep it up underneath the rug right quick while you're talking. They say, oh, well, we don't worry about that because we got Jesus. No, no, no. That's not what Jesus said. He said, be watchful and pray. Don't give me that. So I was on, I was in that message. That was my message to, to my brothers and sisters here. Then I turned to the military chick. I pointed them out and I told them what the Lord told me to tell them. I said, they're going to begin to ask you now. They, no, I said, they are beginning to ask you to do things. They are asking you now to do things that you know go against the body of God, the body of Christ and the army of God. And he will give you supernatural protection so that you will not have to do them. He will hide you up under your wings. He said, but he wants you to remember that you're, you're in the right place. You're a soldier. He made you a soldier for him first and foremost. The soldier blood, the soldier way is for him. And don't forget that because he made you like a double agent. You are infiltrating the enemy army. And all the tears will bust it, bust it out of eyes and came out of face. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 
because Yah had allowed for that tongue, that unknown tongue, to lead into all of this. And then she testified as to why she cried. And she let it be known that that was specifically, exactly, right and exact, what was happening in her job, uh, in her position in the military. Not only were they asking her to do things that she knew was anathema to the body of God, to the body of Christ and the army of God, but also they were putting certain placing restrictions on her ability to serve him and believe as she liked. And I don't want to get too specific on that, you see. It's warfare. But you feel me. You know I ain't running my mouth telling you a tall tale. I might be running my mouth, but I'm telling you the truth. So, as we approach the one hour mark, will we be able to do the last half? Perhaps, perhaps this is what we'll do. See, this is how I would do my classes. My classes would love me because I would not um, be so hard on them. I understand. People got things to do. You spent 55 minutes with me and I haven't begun the lesson. You're a good one. So this is what we're going to do, part one and part two. And this part is going to deal with the testimony of uh, speaking in tongues. So thank you for hearing that testimony because guess what? Though you might have thought one thing was for you, that was for you too. Because a lot of us question that. We've seen too many devilish and demonic takeovers of things of God. Too many demonic uh, 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 claimings. They claim things that's not their own. You know, they want to claim the things of God for their own. Because he has nothing of his own. He's created nothing. He himself was created. So know that this message, this lesson was also for you. And uh, do not be um, against all of the things of the old school. But we are to refine, refine, to perfect, like Yeshua did. Yeshua stood up for the old school, but, we, but you visibly saw him challenging and updating, fulfilling things that they had established. And that's what we do at a temple of the true where Yeshua. And so I'm glad that we had a chance to do a little building about that particular half of the lesson, the tongues, and the power of the tongue. And we're going to tie that in to moving mountains, moving kingdoms by the power of your tongue, the power of your speech. And some of those kingdoms will only be able to be removed by speech untainted by the demonic sorceries of Daniel Webster and Noah Webster and the rest. In order to, 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 to move certain kingdoms, certain mountains out of your way, you will have to be able to access the divine wording, the divine word. If it's through the word, through the prayer, through Yahshua as the word that we do things, then we're going to also be able to use words that cannot be tainted, that have not been tainted, that cannot be used as deception. We will be able to call forth on the spirit by the language of the spirit because that will be key to warfare as we advance on the battlefield. So uh, with that being said, we're going to um, bid you adieu and head to part two. Shalom.